if you are watching this on replay thank you very much if you are going to be joining me for the live thank you i know my times have been all over the place i'll try and get regular times for you all but it's okay it's sunday and if you're here with me now thank you i'm gonna leave it just for a couple of minutes and people join and then i'll be able to talk you through what i am doing but i have made sure that my board is level I've done my prep work and I'll talk you through what my prep work has been. And also, I'm going to make sure that this live's working. Oh, there we are. It's just kicking in. So you should all be able to see me coming through now. Hopefully, wherever you are in the world, you're safe. And I'm going to be working for the first time with... Stone Coat Countertop Resin, which I'm very excited for. It's been sat on my shelf absolutely about six months and I am now ready to crack this bad by open because I needed to work through my other resins. Let me see who we've got in chat. So we've got Yorkie Mum, howdy. And hello, Nicole, welcome. I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes to see who else is gonna join them. Hello, Stacey, welcome. Just double gloving. We have uh, Renee here as well. Renee, should I say? Sorry about that. I hope that my volume's okay and I hope you're going to be able to see what we're doing. Today we're going to go back and I'm going to revisit a piece that I enjoy, which is my Ocean Peaks. And we are going to be upcycling a frame. Now, I'm, I got two of these frames today and I go to a place called The Range in the UK that sells, I think, affordable products for your house all kinds of house home things and I like to go in there because you can definitely upcycle so many so many good frames so I look for them they usually have positive messages on them and then I wipe them off and paint in my background but they are such a good price for you to get from a frame and the reason I like this is it's got the edges already raised up there it's already got the hooks on the back so you can hang your pictures all you need to do is put your base on now i've just done the base in acrylics hello tia welcome hello jellica welcome and i'll show you another one that i got so this is the other frame i've got and they cost me four pound fifty which is fairly cheap and they have some little beautiful messages on there this one is family where life begins and love never ends it's got a sticker on oh i'll remove the sticker but this one's got a darker frame but i decided to work on the lighter frame and on the back, they already have their picture hooks and everything on. What you have to do is tape the back. I put about, hello, Tati, welcome. Hello, Cosmic Carol, welcome. Lovely to see people in here. Now, I put a three layers of tape on these because you can see there is a little bit of a hole there and that resin is going to creep through there. So I put in my tape around there and I really push it into the groove and then I put three layers on that. And because I've added my acrylic paint on there as well, it adds as a little seal. Now you can choose to put glue in there, whatever you want to get that seal, but it's never really been much of a problem. And I've never really lost a lot of resin through doing it the way I'm doing it. And also, yeah, I just think that it adds for it. I do love the rusticness of this frame. So uh, I encourage you to do that. Look for boards like this they can use. It's MDF. So it's going to not warp like a canvas. And the Billy Bargains. you got to look from that out there. Oh, Nicole had a whopping 14 kilogram of Mastercast delivered this week. Happy days. Yes, Mastercast is a trusted one for me. Uh, one that always delivers goodness for me. I do love recycling. Now, what have I done? Now... To paint my acrylics on here, use whatever colours you want. You could just use solid white. If you use solid white, your pigment colours are going to stand out. You could choose to gradiate. I gradiate only because it helps me understand, one, it helps prime the board. So you're going to get reduced air bubbles. It's helping give a little seal around the edge. Two, if you've got transparent pigments, you're going to see through each depth that you do. Half so even when you paint under here, it's going to add some values, but it helps me also work out where does my composition want to be. Now, I've put some shells on here, not because they're staying in that particular order, they've just been put on there because I've picked out the big shells I want to work with. Uh, so, preparation is king. Now, I did have to put two layers of acrylic paint on here only because there was such big wording on there. Again, it had another positive message, but 
I see that as a really great thing for this project because it means that there's positive vibes coming out of this board straight away. Some other things that I've got is I've got a couple of starfish. I'm using up odds and ends. I have just about run out of all my sand, so I need to get some sand. I didn't envisage that, so I need to go on there and get some more sand. So rather than wasting this area here, I've got lots of pebbles that I've collected along the way that mean things to me. So we're going to pop some of those on. So I'm either undecided between the pebbles or some of these white stones that you can get for plants to make them pretty. Uh, or some people have used this kind of thing in aquariums. So I'm going to go for abstract. It's not going to be real. If you're going to start commenting on the size of my waist compared to, my, compared to the size of my shells, get out of here. Anyway, let's see who else we've got. So hello, John. Welcome. I'm just so happy that there's quite a few people in here. I know that my times have been all over and you, you're only missing out a little bit of the view, but I've tried to bring you in as close as possible. So the exciting thing for me is stone coat countertop. I'm going to be using that for the first time and that's the art, art coat. I'm going to be using casting craft. I'm going to be using this little bit of a aquamarine. So that one is the opaque pigment. Then I've got the turquoise opaque. So rather than going for transparent, I've gone for uh, opaque colours this time. Normally I go transparent, but I just thought I'd mix it up. I do have the cobalt blue, which is a metallic one. So hopefully that'll get a nice sparkle. Now I may not go down as far as the open water blue or darkest indigo, but I might do a tiny little bit of those just so when I want to bring a little bit of lines through here to create movement. So. In my mind's eye, what I'm going to try to create is a sense of beach with pebbles and stones that are connected to me that I've collected and maybe a couple of waves here just lapping up and maybe this area here you get to see some of the foam washing around some of those shells. So that's the idea. The first layer doesn't have to be picture perfect. You can stop at the first layer. I like to do two layers, so I'm just gonna go in here and mix it up, but I'm gonna use this as mainly an opportunity to chat and hang out with you, answer any questions that you've got, and also, yeah, just engage with you all while I create. Other than that, how you all been on this fine Sunday? It's been very humid here. So Nicole, um, there is a, group on Facebook that is a UK based Facebook group that specifically is for bulk buying stone cone counter countertop. Now Erica put me on touch with him from Artist Till Death. So I believe she supplies to him. He orders in bulk and understands what people want. There's no extra cost on that, but then we all share the shipping costs to make sure that obviously the person that's organizing this isn't out of pocket so it's a more affordable way of trying it now never used it before i don't know if it's highly rated they seem to recommend it a lot and people over there do so i'm really happy to give this a go and because it's quite a deep one here and because i'm going to fill in a lot of this area i also have my rebel glitter dark ignition goes uh, dark ignition goes <laughs> white ignition dust oh put your teeth in sharon and I, I got out my gold, but I don't think I'm going to put gold um, here. I think I'm going to pop that away. I'm going to keep it. And if I really miss having the sand here, which is what I originally wanted, the second layer can be done when I've got some more sand. Uh, but we shall give it a go. But I know resin will absorb quite a bit of sand. So, oh, Stacey, I'm so sorry. You see, I have been talking about this indigo, so it's created them a lot of sales. I should really contact them and say, uh, make, be aware of my channel and how I'm promoting your products because all of these are paid for by myself. I buy them because I enjoy them. I make no money off these whatsoever. Um, just thought I'd clear that up. Hashtag disclaimer. I'm just going to get my cup and I'm going to start to mix up 300 mils worth of resin. So I'm going to have my mask off just for a little bit because I want to see... Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get a cup that's um, ah, cleaned out properly. So I'm going to keep my mask off for a little while because I want to see the smell of this resin and that's really important to me. Uh, I start to get headaches if they're very sweet smelling. So I want to see what that's like for me. I also have no idea of the working time. It, it looks like when Erica works on it from Artist Till Death, um, that they can appear to work for it for a good 40 minutes, maybe an hour. If anybody has worked with this product, let me know. 
I've not researched it or anything like that. I like to um, have a little bit of knowledge with the resins, but I, I really learn from playing. I'm never going to be this person that's going to read the manuals. I wish I could. I wish I would. But the great thing is it's one-to-one. -one. Yes, it is a really good way of getting stone coat. Uh, maybe Tia... Maybe you should start um, connecting with some resin artists your way or creative people and see whether they'll form a group for you to get it to Ireland. It's a long working time, John. Do you know how long it is? I'd love to know. I think it's going to be about a um, 50 minute work time. So I've got plenty of time to mix this up. So it comes and it's all sealed, which is really good. And I'm going to give you my honest accounts of it as I go. But I suppose I could be pretty biased because any resin, you have to work with it a few times to understand whether you're going to like it or anything like that. So it's really unfair to say in this one go. But I think by the time I get to the end of this bottle, I should know whether it's one that I would work with. It did cost me a lot because obviously you've got the shipping price to get out. Uh, and I only went for, is it a gallon? Um, I think that's all I could afford at the time. <laughs> so I'm going to start mixing this up, but do chat away, depending on your temperature. It's humid over here, John, at the moment. Um, it's about 21 degrees, so it's not too hot, but humid. Uh, it is evening time. My right. well, first thoughts is it's pouring out fairly thick, which is good. So it seems to have got a medium body to it which is kind of like the Ellie Chem one Mastercast which I'm used to working with. It could be that it's just been sat on my shelf for a long time but it wasn't open and it was in a a dark shelf on the bottom. Let me see if that's gonna move on up. It's sort of leveling itself out there nicely to 150. I know it's only early days, but so far I'm not smelling anything. I did buy another uh, gallon as well of the heat resistant one. So I will try using that in some coasters because I've never found a brand over here in the UK that's not left ring marks on your coasters, even though you're using heat resistant ones um, without having to put any additional protection spray on there. But that maybe that's just maybe maybe I have bad luck with posters. Well, so far, Stacey, there's um, some big ones that have come out of there, and I've not stirred it. But I would imagine if you've got a long working time, it'd be interesting to see how they disappear. That was just the hardener uh, that's gone in there. I'm now going to apply. No, that was the resin. Wow, that is thick. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting my uh, gloves all sticky, but they are sealed well. And I am actually not getting any strong smell from this whatsoever at the minute, which is good because some of them, the minute you instantly open them, if it's a sweet smell, I can smell definitely more now the hardener is open. I'm just going to clean my gloves off. It's like a real experiment with me. Hardener is usually thinner. That's probably why it's got that strong, stronger smell coming from it. So the... The resin never smelt anything. I'm smelling something with a harden now, but it's not sweet. Yeah, look at how runny that is. Okay, so, so far so good. Loving the flow. It's nice to christen it with an ocean, because that's what, as you know, I'm going to try and do a sculpture with it as well to see how good it is with sculptures. That'll be my next experiment with some of those. So the bubbles. Just standard bubbles in there. Nothing too bad. Let's mix it together. It looks beautifully crystal clear. Uh, happy with that so far. Well, hello, tre hello Treasures Heather. Hello, Miss Heather Treasures, welcome. You are seeing me give birth to my first, give birth, that's what's bad, bad wasn't it? I'm using Stoke Countertop. Hey Siri, set timer for three minutes. Apologies, people. So as I'm mixing that, the first thing I've noticed is it's actually very thick to stir. Now, once you're mixing in the harder and the resin, I know it's going to get softer, but it has gone, when I say softer, 
you know what I mean, thinner. But you can see it's gone quite white. I like it when a resin does that because that's usually when the chemicals are first coming together, you're mixing them. But when you know that you've mixed it enough, it starts to go crystal clear again. And you do want to make sure that there is no strings in there. So just wiping around the sides every so often and the bottom. But there isn't any huge smell to this. Uh, John, did you notice anything? Nothing sort of sticking, John. Sorry, that was uh, my Siri wanting to join in. Oh, it's, it seems to be mixing okay, John. I mean, when I've spoke to uh, chemists and all that, they always say that it doesn't matter which one you put in, hard or softer, but I suppose it's a personal preference and I'll learn. It was a very thick one, so maybe I've just never had to deal with that before or have that problem. But, yeah. You can start to see that it's starting to clear up and that's an indication that um, your chemicals are mixing beautifully. There's definitely some large bubbles in there, but I am mixing with a wooden stick, so that always puts a bit of bubbles in there. And I've had to mix faster and harder than what I would do normally, only because it felt really thick. But I am scraping around the edges and I'm scraping at the bottom. And I will keep stirring until I'm very happy that it's crystal clear and there are no stringy bits in there. Hello, uh, Rena. No smell for me either. Wonderful, that's good to know. Uh, hello, F Funo. I hope I've said that right. You always warm the hardware a bit. The smell isn't bad for me. Oh, that's good to know, Renny, as well, because I definitely am not smelling anything. I'm not endorsing not wearing a mask or anything like that. <laughs> All I'm saying is, uh, for me, I get a headache if I work with certain resins, if it's got a very sweet smell or a strong smell, even when you've got that mask on. So it's not a preference of mine. Um, so for me, I have to know that the room isn't going to be full of smells and fumes so always please do wear that respirator work in a well ventilated area gloves protective eyewear everything like that which is what's all fixed into my mask but i'm it's definitely not got a strong smell i would imagine in winter then that this would be very hard to mix if you hadn't warmed up your uh, so I used Stone Co exclusively until I made a white piece and it yellowed within 24 hours. Ooh, that's very good to know. Charvada, <laughs> always good to become a Charvada. <laughs> yeah, Charvada will be coming out soon, but hopefully because I'm stood next to you, you will still hear my dulcet tones. <laughs> um, you know, Heather, when you used it, did you overheat the resin? Uh, that's just a question because if you do overheat it, if you've got white in there, it can go uh, yellow quicker. And was it the art cart one, which is the one I'm using? Oh, it's just good to know. I think it's, uh, you can see that that's almost clear. There is a hell of a lot of bubbles. That's user error uh, on my part, but it is crystal clear. And you can feel that it all moves very freely now. Let me just see how long I'm... Oh, there we go. Hey, Siri, stop. So it looks like it's a three minute stirrer and that comes away beautifully. The positive thing is I can let this stand for a little while and we can start to work on composition of shells and I can divide my colours, but I'm just going to let that sit and I'm going to see. So John, Rennie, whoever else has worked with Stone Coat Counterpot, how do you find that the bubbles um, naturally come out of the resin? Do you find that they do pop fairly good? Or did you have to work hard with your heat gun or blowtorch to get those bubbles out? Hello, Christina. Hope you're having a wonderful day also. Heather, I know I used it on a cup. Yes, it was Art Co. And yes, any time though, all season. Had lots of bubbles. Interesting to know. Welcome, Hayley. Lovely to see you. So this is a learning journey for me. I've popped open my Stone Co counter top for the first time, Art Coat. It's been on my shelf for a little while, but I've used all my other resins so I can use that. I am upcycling this board. It has got masking tape around the top to protect the dribbles because I can be a very messy artist. I've put a base on with acrylics just to help my composition. I've chosen the colors that I want to use and I'm gonna to start to split those. The 
this area here is going to be mainly shells i've painted it as a sand color just in case there's things that uh, come through that some water and foam will be over that because you can still see through to your sand at that stage i have just about run out of sand so i might not be able to cover it with as much sand as i would like but i've got enough shells and pebbles to fill it in with so hello alison hello hayley uh hope you are both well um i hope wherever you are in the world you are all safe yeah, you've got to try all resin at least once because I think you all find different things that you enjoy or not. Um, I could stand this in some uh, a bowl of water to help the bubbles come up, but that won't help me because I want to understand its natural working time before it starts to cure. And every time you had, had, add heat, you're going to be forcing your resin to cure uh, more rapidly. But what I will do is start to mix up my white which is going to be the casting craft i really enjoy the casting craft there are other ones out there i think there's mermaid trash there's other pigments you can use this is just my preference and i've also got a lot of it so i want to use it the with the foam for the first coat i'm not really going to need a great deal i envisage a couple of waves that might be a bit too much as it is there so a tiniest little bit in there i'm going to be having one wave there two maybe three but it might be too much and then some around this area here I'm going to try and keep some clear back just in case that I need to add some more and with my casting craft I, I don't want it to look too thin I want it to be opaque but I don't want to put too much in there otherwise it can bleed that oily residue out into your clear resin that's about right so that's the casting craft opaque white you use whichever white you prefer to use within your your oceans i'm going to clean off my stick in between each one just to reduce the amount of wastage for me and clean up time afterwards sharon doesn't like clean up time hello uh miss paula how was your tea i hope you're feeling nice and rested and well fed this is the aquamarine pigment by resin 8 i used this in a piece last night that i was working on as part of for my son's present and oh my god i got some amazing effects from it nearly poured that into my white then that would have been a tragedy so this is going to be touching the white i'm not going to want a lot of it and if i mix up too little resin I can always just mix up some more white, not white, clear, and add it to the sand area. And move them away. So that's the aquamarine opaque colour. Okay, because I'm going to need a little bit more of that. I've poured out roughly the same amount of my white, but that won't do because I need to have maybe a thick band around that area there. But I'm hoping that as this bleeds into the white or the clear, that you're going to get a nice colour that's going to be blending in nicely with a casting craft. So I'm using different colours to what I have used. And for me, it's just about graduating colours. You may prefer to just do it in one colour. That's okay. Now, turquoise, I'm going to go a little bit bigger with colour. Volume-wise. I'm not too worried with my dribbles on my board. Um, it'll all add to the effect. So this turquoise opaque... Be interesting to see if I enjoy the opaques as much as the transparent colours, which is what I normally use. Oh, Rene, you will love them. I really feel you will. Oh, so you tried yesterday, but you, but they sang. He did not use too much Sharon or not enough. I use just resin titanium white and resin a opaque white both sank oh bless you you and your ocean eh 
I think I might have to uh, get on that ferry and come and see you. So we're gradiating nicely there, in my opinion. I don't know if you can see those colours there. Now I'm going to go on to the cobalt blue. So I think the indigo blue is not going to be needed here. I do not believe it will be, so I've just put that back. But I am worried that there's not going to be enough colour for here. So I may have to mix up some more for the sand area. Which is most likely looking at this. In fact, what I might do is after I've put this colour in, I might then just put the clear where the, the pebbles are going to be. So this is a cobalt blue metallic. So it's a nice little sparkle. And if the colours look too detached from each other, um, as in not blended through, don't worry. I can stick my fingers in there and blend them through or get my stick in there and get that sense of hopefully movement in the ocean. Oh, cobalt blue metallic, it's just to die for. It is absolutely stunning. It's eye candy. Oh, Paul, I feel sorry for you with your husband stopping smoking. He's doing the right thing, so just if he gets grumpy with you, don't take it personal. <laughs> He's looking for a reason to start smoking again, so don't let him. <laughs> okay, I'm getting stuff all over my gloves, so I will change that again soon. Um, Tati. Oh, hello, I forgot Godhead in here. I forgot Cheryl in. Hello, Nurkan, I hope I've said that right. So this is the open water blue, so as dark as we'll go. But I feel I may need to add more of the lighter colours. But I am going to add a little bit of this ocean blue here. So in my head, when I start measuring it, I start to work out how is this going to look and feel for my the idea that I want. Add a little bit more of that in there. And then I'm going to take my gloves off because they are out of control sticky. So this is the ocean water blue. So there's definitely a smell in the air. So I can definitely smell the resin, but I think you can smell every resin to be truthful. But it's not sweet. But it definitely has a smell that would make me want to wear my respirator, which is what I'm going to do. So we have our three colours. Now these two are very similar, but I'm hoping when I put them down, there's going to be enough contrast. But bear with me while I just swap over my gloves and get on top of my resin. I'm just going to put my respirator on now uh, because I can smell um, fairly strongly the resin that's coming out. It's not like over the top, but it is one that's thinking, I'm thinking, yeah, get that respirator on, Sharon. So I will try and talk loud enough so you can hear me. So bear with me while I just fight putting this on and Charvada will be with you very soon. Because I am quite near the camera, I'm hoping that you can hear me. So this is a sound check. Can you let me know if you can hear me okay out there in YouTube world? That's okay, Tati. Go and enjoy some time with your daughter. You can always watch it back later. You can hear me? Brilliant. Now I feel safer. <laughs> can you please inform about your videos with subtitles in Turkish? I will see if I can figure out how to do that. And I can, for me, it's just, I don't have a lot of time. Let me just go and shut the door, otherwise Neil's going to get me in trouble with the music. I'm hoping that you can't hear that music downstairs so that YouTube people don't go mad. <laughs> I think he's having a little party down there. 
He's fallen in love with the Ed Sheeran's latest song and it's just on replay. <laughs> I might have to go and tell him soon if it stays on really loud like that. <laughs> can you hear it? Or is it too is it not loud enough for you to hear that? The one thing I did forget to do was add a little bit of the sparkle. I'm going to do that now. That's just for my clear. Alright, just let me just go and ask uh, Neil to turn the music down. Bear with me. Sorry about that problem averted. Hubby <laughs> has been told. So I added the ignition dust into that because I just want a little bit of sparkle where the shells are going to be. And I'm going to get on with this and I'm just settling down from putting my respirator on because it always makes me a bit panicky. Oh, okay. I'm going to start putting my clear down the reason I'm putting my clear down is just to assess how much resin I've used or will need you probably can hear me puffing and panting under my mask <laughs> I've kept a little bit of clear back and I'm just going to start to force my resin into the ends I have tape underneath, so leakage freakage should be minimum. A little, a little bit on my stick. It'd be interesting when I come and uh, do level layer, not level layer two with you i'll be able to show you how much rosin seeps through the edges down into the masking tape on the back now i'm not gonna lie it would be easier working on my composition when i know uh, where i'm placing my shells i'm happy with but because i've got to angle it so that you and me both can sort of see this I'm just going to have to hope that looking at it sideways is actually going to work. Just wanting to make sure a resin touches everywhere. And I can see where I'm going to be working with. Okay, my breathing's back to normal now. I've got some clear now left to work out what colour is, so I'm just going to take my gloves off. What a fizzy worm! <laughs> okay, so I'm going to work out where I would like my shells to be. Now for such as this shell here, I would recommend that you actually put them in resin because that will help him not release any massive air bubbles when he's in your piece. So I've just put him in there, give him a little bath, trying to get rid of any air bubbles that would be in there. And then pop him where you think you would be. You may or may not do that already. Just a little hot tip there for you. And that's basically what I'm going to do with all my shells. Just give him a 
little resin back. Now, this is where, if I get any negative feedback, it's normally about your composition sizes are all out, out, out of whack, Sharon. Your waves are too small compared to the size of your shells. Well, that's the break when you're doing art like this. I'm not meaning it to be realism. I just want it to look good for me. Oh, I forgot to put my conches, what do you call them, canaches? Ah, oh, what's to call those shells? So you do want to balance a little bit where your, your pieces are going, but they don't have to be precise, anything like that. You just have to, I don't know, have some fun, create like you're a kid. Are you still with me? Oh, you're all chatting with yourself, brilliant. Oh, thank you, John. Welcome, Martha. I hope you are well. I hope you enjoyed seeing me create. So before I place any more rocks or stones, anything like that, I've just done that because they're going to be my big ones. I'm just going to get rid of the, um, the air bubble. Then I'm going to add my colour and then I'll add more stones. That's the plan. Happy 4th of July everybody. <laughs> to all our American friends over the pond. Well remembered. <laughs> Does that mean it's big, big, big uh, meal time for you? Hello purple. I wouldn't know if it means that you're all going to be having family and friends around, lots of nice meals. Hope you're well. Okay, darkly. Sorry, just struggling with the blood behind the scene. All right, I'm going to get, get some of these air bubbles. Not that it's going to matter too much because we are going to print stones over there. And you know what? The ocean has stones. I'm going to put just a little bit more clear around here. Only because this is where the first bit of the water is going to go lapping onto the beach. And casting craft will respond well to that. So I'm going to keep a bit of that back. And this is where I'm going to hope that I am going to have enough of the colours. I've actually gone on quite darker than I would have liked it to be. But when I add the white to it, it's going to be all right. I will check chat. If I don't get back to you on any messages now, please, please, please be aware. I do read back chat. I've been really, 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 really bad with time at the minute. So I promise that I will get back and read them. At the minute, I'm just trying to estimate if I've got enough, enough colour. See if I'm gonna like these colours. It's the first time I've done opaque, and I'm like, ooh. 
I'm not too sure yet, but keep working with it. Just trying to help it to the end. I'm going to make that connect with a clear. I'm going to start to brighten this up. So I've definitely got enough resin made. Go on to the cobalt metallic now. There is a big colour difference there. That worries me a little bit, but I'm hoping that as we bleed it through, work out all right for us. We'll check chat again shortly. Just a minute, I'm just trying to get my colours on so I can see what we're doing. when the blender is like that. I'm going to add the final colour. Then the only other colour we've got to add is the white. And then work on the shells. Always drag a bit of colour through, just so some of those tones will all blend nicely. But it's also a trick on the mind with that moving ocean. And remember, this is only the first layer, so if there's anything you don't like about your colours, your composition, can fix up on that next layer. Just want to make sure it's touching all the edges. I have got masking tape on the top so don't worry if you can see dribbles on the top. I can see a little bit around the edge but the next layer will fix that up. Okay I'm just going to get the heat gun through this and do a bit of blending. Are you all with me, people? So hit that um, like button. Yes, that's amazing. Please do that. Oh, be safe in Florida. Is there something going over there with the weather? Apologies if there are. I made my first beach scene using your tutorial using casting craft. No bubble issues, but my wave looked like clouds. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Sending love and prayers out to anybody that's uh, out there if it's sounding like the weather's really bad. Okay, what am I going to do now? I'm just going to actually get my heat gun on. Sorry, I don't know what it is. Just going to try and get some of these colours blended in a little bit.
the purpose of that really was just to heat up the resin a little bit and just to try and get some of those pigments starting to bleed into each other so that they graduate. Then when I start to add my casting craft, that will sort of help with that. What I am going to do though is come down with a little bit of sand. Now I would have liked to have used sand in all of my areas, but I don't have enough sand and I need to buy some. But I'm going to try and keep the strand a little bit of texture around this area. I just um, I got this from like the hobby shop. Um, if you're going to make like I said, light lingo bingo uh, railways, train train things, miniature little villages. So it's like modelling uh, sand. And I just try and shake it in, I'm shaking a salt and pepper pot, multiple different directions just to try and add a little bit of texture. It is going to absorb into this redding and look wet, redding, resin. But this is all going to be a little bit wet, this sand. This is not dry sand area. We're going to have white foam on here and everything like that. But I just wanted the resin to settle down a little bit so there's not too much sand going to go into oh, quite a bit there, the ocean area. I keep doing that. Do it in a different direction. Helps add to that illusion of movement. I might have enough sand for this, you know. A little goes a long way. Yeah, I might just do it, people. Look, no more sand left. I need to buy some more model sand. That little bit there. Might not have to put as many shells in as I thought. I hope my heavy breathing from my respirator is not too annoying. It's a sand miracle. Alright, where, 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 where? I still want some of my stones and that in there, so I'm just going to have a little bit of fun while I do that. Bear with me. I'm just going for stuff that is eye-catching to me that has some sentimental value for me there will be more resin going in there on the next level you don't want things to be too pretty and organized but i do want to create a little bit of a little bit of interest but resin resin <laughs> resin weighs a lot I'm just really mindful that, well I'm working in an area you can't see there, sorry I will start working in this area. So I don't want it to weigh a ridiculous amount because it's going to weigh a lot anyway. I'm like, why are these sentimental to me? Well, I collected them, little bits and bobs, across the years. And yeah, this is going to go in my home. That's the intention though, unless somebody's saying I want to buy it. So I'm just going to do something that I'm going to find is aesthetic, oh, aesthetically pleasing to me. <laughs> Let's just get rid of the hymn. I'm just going to, oh, I'm glad I've got masking tape there. I'm going to wash him off. That actually might sit in there now. You're committed to it now. and dilute some more of that colour off him. And carry on with my the thing that I'm enjoying. I might take my gloves off actually because it's making it a little bit hard to pop things. 
This is where it's a bit harder for me because it's sideways, so I can't really see the impact of where I'm doing greatly. So far it looks good to me. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's a bit boring for you if you can't see. I've got a stash of stones at the side here, and I'm just stones and shells. I'm just gonna find us just wherever the resin gods want them to go, that's where they'll be. Too far off. I want them to be right. Oh, <laughs> I don't put anything near that then, otherwise it might look kind of. Move, move it a little bit. So it doesn't look. That one's going the other way. I think it's fun doing this part. I really do. I'm imagining where the foam's going to run under them all. I think. I think I'm happy with that. I'm contemplating one more thing. Whether that one more thing should go or not. This time I had a concubine just there. Mm. All right. That's the final thing. That's my beach. So what I'm going to do now is start to add some foam now. This is the bit Alison you've probably been waiting for. <laughs> Let me entertain you hopefully. Glad I've got some clear legs. I think I'm going to need some. Want some foam to go around there. Right, I'm going to have to put all of that clear into my white because I'm not going to have enough white at this stage. So you can't see me off camera, I am just scraping out as much resin as I can for my white foam. I think there'll be enough. Just. <laughs> this is where you start to panic when you're thinking, oh no, I just worked on my composition and... I'm going to run out on the most important thing, which is my white foam. Okay, I'm going to add some more. Just adding some more um, casting cloth to my white. Okay. 
the cast that's the casting craft that is not me. <laughs> I should have enough. Hi Chippy. Alright, so what I'm gonna do and I said alright then Anna is I'm gonna add some little bits of white here where it looks like maybe the foam. is coming and crashing well not crashing but it has been around some of these rocks you may not want to do this it's okay i think it just adds a little bit of more realism to your piece And we can change this up if we need to. I'm going to bring some white down here. And then I'm going to leave some white back because after I've blown it for the first time, I'm going to want to do it again. And this is the only layer one, so if you don't get it good, we're going to come back and do it again on the next layer. back and I'm going to get my gun out now and we are going to torch it I'm going to put the noise on so it may get in your <laughs> ears a little bit apologies and I'm going to start with the top one and I'm going to go over it warm the resin up just go back and forth a little bit if your resin is warm, it's going to blow nicely. So I'm mindful I don't want to move too much of my shells. so the casting craft has sunk a little bit there but i'm not too bothered when i add another layer that's going to help that so i'm going to come again and it's the first time i'm working with these pigments so pigments do respond differently and that's something you have to remember as well But this is only first layer this will all add to the movement underneath so alice and i might be doing the same or seeing the same problem that you've been going through and hopefully that'll give you encouragement to keep going I'm going to go 
get my torch again and do the same thing. Okay, back and forth again. Okay, I'm just going to let that settle now and I think for layer one that is going to be enough. I'm just going to get my, get rid of my bubbles. We're just going to let the resin do what it wants to do and then next layer we'll come back and I will I'm going to have to get rid of some of those bubbles but that's all right next layer what we'll do is I'll work with transparent pigment so you'll still see this behind and it'll look like it's churning but when we add the next level the casting craft should stand out a little bit more and the waves will look a little bit brighter but we want that underneath depth sort of movement and um, yeah, anyway. I like my, I'm gonna take my, um, my respirator off now uh, and just chat with you all. But I'm not saying my method is the only method. I'm not saying that mine isn't, I don't like that zigzaggy thing there. So I'm just gonna get this and just try and work out what's going on there. I think it's just about, ooh, a little bit of a smell. I just didn't like what that was doing there so I'm just bleeding that in a little bit trying to stay away from my wave but try and make it look like it is moving I'm just coming and doing the same thing here just trying to sort out the bits that I'm not enjoying And just trying to blend that together so it looks a little bit more like it is water moving as opposed to a paisley design now but like i say it's the first time i've used these pigments and they definitely respond differently to um, the transparent ones i've used or the the oils not the oils oh my word the acrylics I'm just going to do the same here as well and don't be afraid to play around with it after you've done it, the bits you don't like. You can sort of push your pigments into your white or vice versa until you're happy. So there is a sense of movement there. But I can't wait to add the next layer now. But I am going to see what's going off in chat. And yeah, I hope that you found this interesting. Thank you, Tia. I'll take you off and take you in close so you can see that the um, the waves are not perfect yet. This is how I prefer mine. I don't like them looking like they've got webbing going down. That's just not my style. I like to look like there's foam and it's churning. And this first layer is all about trying to get some of the dark and the light and the movement and your composition. And then on the next layer, we can then start to push the artistic uh, feel of it and that's why I believe that you need two layers anyway I'm going to take you in watch your eyes so there is some air bubbles still there which I'll tackle after I've put the camera down for you but for the purpose of just showing you where it is that we're doing this is just a little bit of a close-up of where we are take you up in the middle Hopefully you've seen some of that nice white sort of foam there and you can see those different gradating colours. And then top corner, don't worry about all these. I've got masking tape on there, so that should be okay. So that is 
stage one and that's how I um, get prepared for that base layer and I think this is going to be a really nice piece I definitely I'm going to lighten those colors up on the next one and go for transparent but I'm hoping that you're enjoying that Alison can you do your wave um Alison you can do the wave Sharon just did right Alison where are you with it did you learn anything from how I was doing my waves then did you get any inspiration you got to see it real time <laughs> anyway I'm gonna love you and leave you and I just want to say thank you all so much for hanging out with me I plan on doing the second layer tomorrow if you are around tomorrow uh, come back and see me it will be at 6 30 again and then you'll get to see how this cures and you'll get to see how I do my next layer I'm not too worried by the bubbles uh, I don't want to use alcohol on this because it might create some cells in there which I don't want but I will, um, because it's going to have another layer, it's not, not that important that they're all gone. But remember, if you do have a channel and you want other artists to go over and support you and show you love, please give a thumbs up um, and a, a heart after your name so that people know to go out and check out your channel. And also, if you haven't given me a thumbs up, a thumbs up would be really helpful. That helps my channel grow and it helps uh, as a way of saying thank you for what it is that we're doing with sharing the art out there so have a wonderful evening everybody it was a short and sweet one for me i'll see you tomorrow evening at 6 30 uk time thank you paula and thank you to all the members for all your support and thank you for every other supporter out there much love speak to you later bye bye